Greetings to everyone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to the house of the Lord. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. And thank you for being here with me watching this program. The title of today's message is Pray That You Will Not Be Misunderstood. <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne and we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you will bless this word unto your people who are watching and hearing. Lord, let the words fall on good soil in their hearts that they will bear much fruit for you. Lord, I cover them all with the blood of Jesus. Protect them from the powers of darkness. In Jesus' name I pray. <clears throat> pray that you will not be misunderstood. Since we are now living in the last decade before the Lord returns, pray that you will not be misunderstood because of the many decisions you are going to make or undertake. First of all, in order not to make wrong decisions before anything else, we need to commit to God's will before we do anything. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything we need is in God. <clears throat> you believe this? <laughs> it is God who gives us the best blessing rather than man, because it lasts longer than what man can give. Amen? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Right? My dear brothers and sisters, are you diligently seeking God's spirit? We need to live a life of prayer and seek the Lord because we are in a spiritual battle. We must not be conditioned by what the general consensus say, as opposed to what God says. The most beautiful thing in life are not seen with the eyes or felt with our emotions, but what comes out from the heart that loves God. In the book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being prepared day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, right? but the things which are not seen are eternal. So my dear brothers and sisters, right? seek God. Some seek their own on, in their own lives, their own rules. Like people make, as they go along in life, they make their own rules. But are we seeking our lives by what God says for us? And that needs to be a priority. <clears throat> there are two incidents that is worth mentioning that Jesus went through that the people of his time, whilst on earth, misunderstood him. The first one, when he was speaking to the scribes and Pharisees about his death and resurrection to come, but they misunderstood him. So let us read Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 42. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. <clears throat> but he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it.
for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, many things are being misunderstood even in the scriptures by the people of those times. And some of us do too. Look, his disciples also misunderstood him. Okay, let's, let's read that. Luke chapter 18, verse 31 to 34. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, are we, going up? we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. They will scourge him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. But they understood none of these things. <laughs> this saying was hidden from them and they did not know the things which were spoken. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many things that God spoke in the scriptures that many people misunderstood. Even his disciples. Point number two. <clears throat> when Jesus was speaking about communion, people again misunderstood him. John chapter 6 verse 51. Oh, this is a long one. 69 says here. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live longer. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, <laughs> which I sh which shall give which I give for my life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in him, in you. And who, sorry, 54, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is in food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. <clears throat> As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, not as the fathers ate the manna are dead. He who eats this flesh, or sorry, eats this bread will live forever. These things he said to the in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many disciples turned away. Look <laughs> what misunderstanding can do. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. <laughs> who can understand it? When Jesus knew when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life, and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. But these are the, are the sorry, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe. Amazing. And who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. Wow. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? <laughs> But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. If Jesus was misunderstood during his time here on earth, we will also be misunderstood. And that is why we need to incorporate in our prayers today that as we obey the leading of the Holy Spirit, what to do, right? We must pray to God. We must ask God that we are not being misunderstood, especially 
for our immediate members of the family. Then there is our natural siblings, right? our brothers and sisters who are not saved. Our decisions can bring an offense to their own standards of life. Can you understand what I'm trying to say? You know, we don't know what's going through the minds of others. And sometimes because they love us, because they care for us, and they see what we do and they don't understand it, they can get even offended at us, right? So this is a time where all of us need to pray, Lord, please don't let my sister misunderstood it. Lord, please don't let my daughter misunderstand me. All the time we need to ask the Lord so that God, through the Spirit, will give them clarity. <laughs> then there are, is, there are our peers, our friends, <laughs> and bosses who are not saved, right? They could see us as a radical Christians who don't want to conform to what is basic in their ways or in their life, way of thinking, right? right? Then there is also other Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, who don't agree with some of our beliefs. So we need to pray fervently for them that their understanding is open to the truth in the Bible, that the Holy Spirit will give them the spirit of understanding, right? Misunderstanding can definitely destroy family relationships between parents and children, between husband and wife, and much more. The sad part about it is that if the victims continue to listen to the counsel of the evil one, there is no restoration in those relationships. Restoration can only come through to the counsel of God. Uh, when many can find forgiveness and reconciliation. I'm speaking about this now because the Lord has caused me to see how many people suffer through a simple misunderstanding. I hope you have experienced this and I hope it's a yes. <laughs> Betrayal is caused by misunderstanding between the persons you love and between other relationships. Pray that you are not misunderstood by others. And for the person caught on the wrong side of misunderstanding, it becomes an obsession to fix it or make right the situation and will do even the most unspeakable evil deed to get away with it. It becomes a very ruthless behavior. I don't know if you have experienced this, but, but it was difficult when I went through it. And I can see it's difficult for others as well when they go through it. In a custody of children in a divorce case, the children are the ones that suffer the most. Scars are imposed that can last for years until the Lord God heals them. Some have even blamed God for their woes. In a divorce case, both individuals, male or female, are responsible no matter who caused the separation. My dear brothers and sisters, misunderstanding takes a big toll. And betrayal can turn to hate, and hate into murder if not kept under control. A person without solid foundation in Christ can fall away from their Christianity and never be reconciled with God. Amazingly, this has happened with many. I have seen it with young couples. Now, I want to share some steps one can do to resolve any conflict resolutions. This is not the complete answer. The complete <laughs> steps really can be given to you, but to anyone, by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, who knows what's going through the mind of everyone else. So I suggest, if you are in a, this situation where you have been misunderstood, <clears throat> pray fervently that the Holy Spirit will intervene in that relationship 
and will give you the solutions to do what is necessary. Right? We are all responsible for our behavior. And sometimes we say and do things which are not right with God. So let's look at the steps. Dealing with disagreements. <clears throat> Number one, very simple. Listen to one another. Right? You can definitely listen without making a comment. When you listen, you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Praise God. Empathize with one another. Ask questions if you are not sure. <laughs> Do not assume things. Amen? Take responsibility of your actions or what you've done or take responsibility of what you're about to say. <laughs> Fifth, direct things to the pastor only if uncertain <laughs> or it is the last alternative. Okay? Really, we should sort out our own problems. Only we can you, when you need a third person, man. Then you can call the pastors to come in. But that's a bit difficult sometimes because people don't like to open up when somebody's hearing them or listening to what they're doing. <laughs> right? Dealing with one another, you need to respect and acknowledge that everyone has different expectations and perceptions. Right? So... You could be living with a person for a long time and really not know that person. <laughs> and until finally, pop, it pops up and there you go. And there's a lot of misunderstanding going around. You can speak, one can speak civilly to one another when needs are not met. So in other words, you can tell your wife or your spouse, honey, I don't really like it this way. But there's no shame of telling them. So that the others will know not to do it again. Amen. <laughs> Two, you need to verbalize what you have in mind. Right? Don't assume that he or she knows what is in your mind. Right? And many times I got blamed for this. <laughs> I was told, oh, pastor, you should know what's going on. How am I supposed to know? Unless the Holy Spirit of God tells me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in the lives of many couples. Right. Number three, identify and introduce appropriate solutions to unresolved issues. So, if there is issues between couples, you need to identify it and provide some sort of solution or some sort of agreement. <laughs> and so that you don't keep on fighting. Amen? Misunderstanding is terrible you know and when we find out that we have misunderstood someone all these years and we did not know and we did some major decisions i tell you you will feel rotten right almost to the point that you will want to cry for what we have said or done amen so, barriers to communications or what causes conflict? Perception. What you understand things to be. Okay, I may understand things to be this way, and the person living beside you may not understand it the way you do. Emotional. Being emotional in addressing issues is not good. We need to be rational in addressing issues. It is a matter of getting... It is a matter of getting what you want, right? So in other words, think about it carefully. Don't let the emotions come into play, right? Address the issue. Now, don't get emotions. Emotions is what brings you to anger, all right? And you give up straight away. <clears throat> all right, culture. Sometimes different upbringings come into play because if you were brought up in an ancient country and your partner is from a Western country, there are two different cultures. So you need to understand each culture and give uh, a way, uh, well, a leeway. Right? In other words, <laughs> submit to one another. All right? Don't just fight. Number four, the gender. Give yourselves grace for mistakes as a man thinks differently to a woman. Amen? And a woman thinks differently to a man, 
right? Men don't expect you wives to think like you do. <laughs> okay, number five, interpersonal, right? <laughs> it's not a matter of your kinds, oh, sorry, God. it's not a matter of our kids or what we eat, right? Or what we take responsibility of or what we are personally are responsible of, of, for, but what God is saying. Right. Sometimes we are being just difficult. <laughs> and and we need to adjust. So what is God telling you with regards to your relationship with others? Right? Are you just too picky? <laughs> or are you just letting go of everything? We must learn how to speak. We cannot be too picky, my dear brothers and sisters. Right? We must not let our personal behavior take control over the matter right but what god is showing us the right thing to do i i hope some of this is sinking in because you know recently i uh experienced uh, a situation or have seen a situation where misunderstanding really cause two people to fight and to get nasty to one another. And the fact is both of them were both wrong. And uh, and I didn't want to interfere. I had to pray to God and say, Lord, they're misunderstanding one another. Help them to see where their mistakes are, right? We must always remember, right? Forgiveness is better than vengeance. Compassion is more powerful than anger. So we cannot get angry straight away for what is going through. Even though you have found that somebody has caused you injustice, try to find out where the mistake occurred, where the misunderstanding occurred, and then ask the Lord what to do. Right? And once you are on a good thing, Put signs <laughs> in, in the fridge and everywhere to remind you right, of what you need to think about your partner that is living with you so that we don't offend them. Okay. Look, I, I don't know what else to say about this matter. All I can say is this. If Jesus was misunderstood by the people, at that time, and so was his, his disciples, we can easily be misunderstood. I hope this message has done something for you. Even to think, right, that you definitely don't want people to misunderstand you. So you need to ask Holy Spirit to tell you how to speak clearly and precise so that people don't misunderstand you. Don't presume that they should know. Even though you have been living for years with each other, don't presume that they should know. Speak it out. Communicate. Uh, learn to submit to one another. I'm speaking about this because I've been seeing many marriages going through a difficult time and the devil is really playing havoc with them. Right? We must conserve our marriage. And for those of you whose spouse is not <laughs> saved yet, <laughs> I call them pre-Christians, you need to give more grace for them because they really don't understand you. I hope this does something for you. And I pray God will give you the light <laughs> what to say and what to do. God bless you all. Let's close in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that as I release those words for you, that understanding will come upon everyone who has heard this message, that they will make a great effort to say clearly what they mean with their hearts and with their mind, Lord God, and not to leave any gap for confusion, Lord Father, especially the gap where the enemy puts a wedge between relationships. 
I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will give them an understanding. Let the spirit of understanding come upon each and every one of your saints and bless them, Lord. I pray in this, in my Jesus' mighty name. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Amen.